Welcome to the podcast, Vlad. Thank you so much for being here and my in my guest today. And I'm having a hard time pronouncing your last name. So can you please clarify that for me? Of course, it's Arakcheyev. I know it's not the easiest, but you know, it makes me unique. Yes, very unique. And we all are. And I'm so glad you're here to get today. So I'm just going to start off with just telling you a little bit about Vlad. Vlad is an active and passive full-time multifamily real estate investor, as well as a residential real estate agent in New Jersey. He launched Zontic Ventures, a privately held commercial property investment company to help create long-term wealth by investing in real estate together with investors. Vlad also loves to continuously learn things. I, I've just through knowing him a little bit, um, he likes to expand his mind. He, including Dr. Benjamin Hardy's exponential psychology course based on his book, 10X is Easier Than 2X, which I also took and was blown away by. And so after this course, we both signed up for to continue with our learning and accountability and we're placed in the same group with about six other people that meets on a weekly basis. So Vlad always brings a wealth of resources to this group and I'm so happy to have him on the show. So welcome Vlad. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm super excited to be here. It's uh see my my thought is this, if you're not growing or learning, you're kind of standing still or some people say you're kind of moving backwards. So it's really important to network and, of course, learn new things because it's just it's going to improve your value and mm -hmm. you can share it with others. So it, it's a win win. Oh, definitely. And I'm in that category, too. I just love to learn anything personal development. I've got tons of books that I like. I've taken tons of courses as well. So as we mentioned, as I mentioned earlier, we both went through Dr. Benjamin Hardy's course. Can you share some of your biggest ahas or your takeaways from that course or that book? Yeah, one of the biggest things that really struck with me or stuck in my head is going deep and focus. Um, before I was not focused and tried to do too many things, mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, let me just try everything and then, you know, whatever fits better. But it's not the case. Um, as I read the book and I was speaking with people, I think it's easier to identify what you're really good at. What's your superpower? and go deep on it, really focus, and then find somebody else to help you with other things instead of wasting your time. Just to give you an example, I was working on automations, right? So uh, I'm trying to reach out to potential investors and automate my newsletter. So it took me three days to figure out this automation and it, it didn't even work at the end. So after I did this course and read so many books, uh, one of them was who, not how, also, Ben. Yeah. Uh, listen, find your who that can help you with this problem. So I found uh, uh, somebody who knows uh, computers, who knows automations, who knows networks and stuff like that. He did it in like three hours. Really, three hours it took him and everything is working great. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I, I wasted two, over two days with this and got nowhere. Mm -hmm. How unproductive was I? right? What yeah. did I miss by just doing this automation and it didn't do anything? So one of the biggest takeaways was uh, find someone someone to help you. Mm -hmm. And of course, go deep and focus on the things that you're really, really good at. So yeah. Yeah. Because I, I mean, I, I'm kind of just getting that, you know, the thoughts of, you know, how we, how we're used to like in school and stuff, you know, your weaknesses, work on your weaknesses, you know, and bring them up. But this is a total shift in thinking, you know, as go with your strengths, like get your, and in the book, it's the top 20%, you know, you get your 20%. What are you really, really good at? And if you can get deep and focused on that, and like you said, find the other people that maybe their 20%, like this guy is like, it took him three hours to get your automation for your, your new newsletter. And it was two, two to three days of your time and it didn't work, you know, finding those people that, that that's their zone is genius. And then yeah. you can focus on yours and you work together and wow, what can happen? Like a yeah, ton of stuff, right? Biggest thing is team building. Mm -hmm. I uh, I figured as I was speaking, and and my multifamily, I invest in multifamily. Uh, it's a team sport, and mm -hmm. I started getting idea of teams from there. So when you a uh, real estate agent, typically you work all by yourself, mm -hmm. right? There's no teams. Now you can have teams, but basically you're kind of doing it by yourself. When it comes to multifamily you have to be or larger commercial properties you have to be in a team it's just impossible to do by yourself like just to give you an example i live in jersey 
I buy properties in Midwest and Sunbelt markets, right? So how can I do it? Well, you need a team. You need somebody in that area, in that market, and they're your eyes and ears. They're your boots on the ground. So same is being transferred into this. Mm -hmm. So find someone who's really, really good. Like, for example, something happens with the website. I don't have to stop what I'm doing, right? I have a person that's taking care of it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you have to do to free your time and go really deep to take it to the next level. Yeah, I love that idea, the, the team concept, and it was, it, you know, a sport thing, because our family, we're all sports. And so that really resonates a lot. We had, you know, in sports teams, whether it's volleyball, basketball, baseball, football, whatever it is, there's roles, right? Each person has a role. And in order for the team to be successful, each person has to do their role. And so the same with you, as far as, like you said, you have boots on the ground in the Midwest and the Sun Belt, and you can be in Jersey. If somebody's on the website, you have those go-to people that can get that done. That's their strength. And that can just build up. So that kind of just grows your team, right? And it grows your potential, I'm assuming. It, it does, because just think of it this way. I, it, just go back to the sports uh uh, to the sports analogy, if you're a quarterback, you cannot throw and catch at the same time, right? Mm -hmm. You do you do what you you do what you're great at. Um, same thing here. Like we, in order to make sure the deal works, in my case, we underwrite it. So we look at the potential. We look at the numbers. Can I underwrite? Yes. But it takes me three hours. A typical really good underwriter, it should take thirty minutes to maybe forty five minutes. So why would I waste my time and struggle in Excel documents and uh, look at all these numbers and go, you know, spend my three hours. Mm -hmm. Why can't I find a good underwriter that knows their stuff, right? So I can okay. focus on something else. Like my focus is investor relations, right? That's what I do. Also, I do some asset management. I'm good at that. I can figure it out. I'm solving problems, mm -hmm. right? With the asset. But when it comes to underwriting, I can do it. I understand it. I can read it. But underwriting it myself, yeah, it's going to take me three times longer. So I have my who, right? That has the underwriting for us. So problem solved. Problem solved and less frustration, I'm assuming, because that would be, <laughs> I'd be beating my head against the wall trying to figure that stuff out. That's not in my zone of genius, that's for sure. But you, you mentioned that you like to, you know, just it's the importance of learning and growing. Um, otherwise, you're standing still or falling behind. So how does that help you move forward? And, and, you know, anything related to the book too, how does that, how does that help you push forward? You know what? Everything is changing so quickly that if you're not on top of it, others will beat you out. And uh, in my case, in real estate or in business, everything moves so quickly. Mm -hmm. And you, if, if you, if you're not up here, if you're not performing at your maximum level, then you're going to start losing deals. You're going to start falling behind. Mm -hmm. And really, really good. In addition to the books, um, I have to, I have to, you know, uh, call out my wife here because she, 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 she has a red personality, right? On a disc test, mm -hmm. she's a red. So she's always constantly moving forward, constantly saying, "Hey, come on, we have to do this, do this." Even right now, she's going to two networking events. I mean, come on, she can't even go to one. She do, she does two. And she found Ben Hardy's course. Oh, okay. She signed me up. <laughs> she said, she, you know what she said? She didn't say, you, would you like to go? She said, no, I signed you up. You're going. <laughs> nice. I'm like, and I'm like, I like Ben. I didn't even know about his course. You know, mm -hmm. it, it was yep. great to uh, kind of learn new stuff. She's like, oh, yeah, you're going. <laughs> so that's exactly how it is. So you, I, I really get a big kick in the butt from Ben here and uh at the same time, you know, right. you know side me up, it's like, hey, we have to do this thing together. So it's it's really important. I'm I'm blessed this way that we're on the same page, that yes. we're going in the same direction. We're not like going in the opposite direction. And going back to the underwriting, she's my underwriter. A lot of people are like, oh, you need an underwriter? I'm like, yeah, I, I don't think I can fire my wife. <laughs> so uh, she she does underwriting for me and uh, for us, and obviously she does networking as well. Mm -hmm. And I yeah, don't. so um, I think I think it's important. You mm -hmm. really have to drive forward. You really have to explore. If you look at, I'm bringing back everything to real estate because it's just mm -hmm. that's yeah. what I do. Yep. If you compare to what happened two years ago to now, 
it's a completely different ball game. Mm -hmm. with the rates were three percent. Oh, everybody's wow. buying, 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 and look what's happening now. The rates are it's September now, so it's at seven percent, mm -hmm. and people are holding back. So that doesn't mean you have to stop what you're doing. No, it's like going on the highway, right? You can't be going 55 and as soon as you hit traffic, you panic and you pull over. No, shift lanes, slow down, keep on going forward. Mm -hmm. Same thing here. So we slow down, we change our approach. We're still buying, we're very active. I'm still selling houses here in New Jersey. Just shift the lane, keep going, find the solution. That's the big thing. Always find solutions. So, yeah, I mean, that's, you know, people can get really stuck. So do you have any, you know, advice on people like, you know, when you're in those lanes and it's like, oh, life throws some, you know, obstacles at you, maybe there's a detour or, you know, maybe the road's closed, you know, how, how do you push forward? I mean, some, some people aren't in that mindset of, you know, switching lanes. They don't really think of it that fast. Is yeah. there any advice you can give anybody? Yeah. You know what? Accountability, mm -hmm. accountability group makes a big difference if you if you just feel stuck and and if if something hits you and you're like okay that's it i'm done i that there isn't such thing i do not believe that there is no solution for a problem and i'll give you a crazy example so we're working on this foreclosure case and foreclosures you have to deal with the bank and you deal with with the sheriff's office and then and you have the courts involved it there's a lot of moving pieces here and it always happens the seller always waits till the last second like always they they in denial of some sort mm -hmm. so uh a seller we we call a seller and be like hey listen your house is going into foreclosure we have to do something we can postpone it we can save your credit we can do all these things no nah, everything's gonna be fine we have it taken care of three days before foreclosure three days no no everything's fine don't worry we got it taken care of on the day of the sheriff comes over with a note and says, we're going to kick you out by noon. They call us and they go, hey, listen, uh, they're going to kick us out. You have to help us do something. We're like, we've been telling you for weeks. But guess what? A lot of people, or a lot of, I shouldn't say a lot, but uh, some people might say, okay, there's nothing we can do. We a uh, few hours in, there's no way. We actually did it. No. Two hours till noon at from 10 to 12. Mm -hmm. We called attorney, we called the judge and judge's assistant. I don't I don't even know his name. Yeah. So we called him. He actually stopped the foreclosure. He 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 did a motion, stopped it. So I do not believe there is nothing that can be done. Yes, there's always that you, you can do stuff. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people say, Oh my gosh, I can't qualify for a loan. I, I can't buy uh this house. Uh, like my credit score is low. Yes, you can fix your credit score. There's various online resources that can fix your credit score in a month. It You can hike it up by 100 points, yeah. maybe a little less, but you can. So I do not believe uh, in, in stopping or saying no. Mm -hmm. Find somebody who can help you. Or our accountability group, what time is it meeting? 9 a.m.? I think it's 9 a.m. It's on my calendar. I, <laughs> it I is. Get... For you, it is. <laughs> yeah. So it's 9 a.m. every Monday. Mm -hmm. And that's where I get my motivation from, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Others are sharing their uh, failures, which is great. Mm -hmm. And then the solutions, which is even better. Yeah. Right? So I'm yeah. like, hmm, they're doing it. They're finding solutions. So we're bouncing ideas off of each other. So finding an accountability group mm -hmm. or coaching, yeah. It, it, it don't think you know everything you oh, don't yeah. No, no our lines are pretty limited based on our experiences and and what we seek out and those groups of people whether it's an accountability group a friend you know you know the neighborhood coffee group but you know people that have some influence that are, are moving and shaking and learning some new things always bring up some new ideas or stir up some new ideas within us. Cause it's really great. Like you said, it's like, they have like failed at something, but we turn it around. It's just not, not really a failure. It's like a learning opportunity. Yeah. And so we learn and, and we can also just, you know, give our own insights on it. And then the solutions come about, there might be three or four solutions that come up in a conversation and you're right there. There's no stopping, you know, you know maybe when you're dead, you'll stop, but you know, cause that's all end, right? But there's other opportunities out there. So yeah, get that accountability person, get somebody to talk to you because just bouncing ideas off of somebody can stir up some new solutions for you. So that's that's great. I mean, it, with the teamwork, you have your team there, you can bounce ideas off, you're having a bad day, 
go talk yeah. to somebody, right? Yeah. I mean, you you really, you just have to shift your focus, mm -hmm. right? So before, I, I mean, we all have faults, we all have bad days, which is true. Uh, but I have learned to, and I'm working on it really, really hard. That's my number one goal now is uh, learn to meditate. Mm -hmm. uh, meditation is incredibly difficult. And if you ask me two years ago, I thought it was silly. Same as yoga. I thought, oh, psh, come on, that's no big deal. Mm -hmm. But uh, yoga is incredibly difficult exercise because it's just, you kind of put your body in a weird way that it's not designed to be in. Right. Uh, and same with meditation, because meditation, the, the goal of it, or I'm trying to understand the goal of it, is to focus your mind. Your mind is constantly racing. It's mm -hmm. constantly thinking. And the goal of it is to stop it from racing, to be present, to be here now. And uh, out of all the people that I talk to, two just kind of stand out. And one person, I always mention them in uh, interviews, uh, but you know, he, he, he's a big in uh, investing world. He was so focused, so ultra present. There was like 200 people around us, mm -hmm. but he's like so focused on me. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's just me and him. And I was just amazed. And everybody asked him questions like, oh my gosh, how do you get so big? How do you buy these buildings and stuff? I ask him one question. I go, how do you stay so focused? How many, I didn't even ask if he, if he meditates. I said, how many hours do you meditate? And he answered, he looks at me and he goes, that's, you're like the first person that asked me this. And he goes, how much time do you have? I'm like, as much as you need. I mean, because he, I already mm -hmm. knew because this brings you like so much clarity and yeah. focus. It's so difficult to do. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm working on now to be completely present and here now. Mm -hmm. uh, and I believe it's, it's incredibly difficult because your mind is, uh, that, that yeah. thing is in the butt, you know, because it's constantly racing. You can't stop it. It's supposed to. It's mm -hmm. giving you all this feedback. And the the worst thing is that it can affect how your body feels. It make mm -hmm. it can make you sick. Yeah. So it's really important to really control it. If you can mm -hmm. control your mind, everything else will fall into place, like body and mind. And it's just yeah. one, one unit. Yeah. So. I mean that is so difficult, and it goes back to you know being in deep focus. I mean, your mind is racing and, and people don't really understand the importance of that to, to slow it down because it's, it's time to reflect and to kind of be aware of ourselves. You know, you were, we're go, go, go. It's, it's a fast paced world, but if we can turn that around and slow it down, like the connections you can make, the associations, the, the awareness pieces, you know, you can become more aware of how you're feeling. You say there's a total integration between your thoughts and your body and how you're feeling. And, and all of that is all related. You can't just separate them. Yeah. And so being able to control that, oh, that's a huge gift we can give ourselves. It's like, like you said, power, it's, it is a superpower. I mean, like you said, that guy has just like extreme focus and it's just amazing what can be done when we, yeah. when you think about it, like the light, and then you like focus in on a spot, like in a laser, like what, I mean, that's extreme focus. What can a laser do? It's the same amount of, you know, light beams, but concentrated in a single motion. What can we do? We can like cut things, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's really important. And it's, you know, before I was, uh, I use uh, Apple uh, uh, phone and Apple system. So a couple of years ago, they came out with this uh, addition called Focus, uh, where you just turn off all notifications. And I thought, what a silly thing. I mean, who's going to use this? This is completely useless. Guess what? I'm using this thing every single day. Mm -hmm. Even right now, I yeah. have silence focused mode turned on on my computer and the, and the phone. It, it's incredibly crucial. And especially... This this is a crazy statistic that I just read. If you if you do one thing and you mm -hmm. get distracted by something else, mm -hmm. it takes you thirty minutes, yeah, thirty minutes to fully refocus on that task again. So let's say you have an hour to do something, mm -hmm. and you in it, you you in deep flow, right? You in deep deep work, and then you get distracted by some stupid email or a notification or something. It's gonna take you thirty minutes to come back to this like mm -hmm. full i'm like oh my gosh this is huge yeah so i'm using this focus apps all the time i'm I'm blocking everything yeah 
you know so it i think it's super important especially how our mind works you just have to understand it so mm -hmm. yeah deep, deep flow and focus on that aspect so how do you feel like all the distractions can interrupt our health like how how does that impact it and what do you i mean you are doing that focus you know you're doing that what else can be done besides trying to just get the distractions out you know what it's um I'm trying to, before I was, it, uh, that's a difficult question. Yeah. I, I was, yeah, I, I was trying to understand uh, the importance of things, just things. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of people like, oh yeah, enjoy the time now. And uh, uh, th time is flying fast. Don't take it for granted, things like that. And I completely understand. So I am, I'm going with time blocking on everything. Like literally I'm time blocking. I know it's going to sound weird, but I'm like time blocking dates with my wife. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, because it, I don't, I, I don't want interruptions at all. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a lot of people, I, I shouldn't say a lot, but people that I see, let's sit, sit in the restaurant and they're mm -hmm. typing on the phone. I mean, enjoy being there. Enjoy right. being with them. Can you talk about work? Yeah, talk about work. Talk about anything. Just don't type on social media or Facebook. Just It's so mm -hmm. difficult to do, though, because we're addicted to it. Yeah. It's an addiction, right? So, yeah. so, and the thing is, you know, as soon as we wake up, we can start scrolling on Facebook or something like that or Instagram. I'm guilty. I'm mm -hmm. guilty of it. As soon as I start scrolling, I'm like, I, I I already kind of trained my mind and I go, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. What are you looking for? Yeah. This, it, come on. I mean, if you're trying, it, like my job is I have to market my business. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to marketing, yes. If you want to get ideas, if you're getting productive, but just sitting there scrolling, could you do something better? Yeah, you can. If that's your way to relax, I guess. Not really. Not really. Uh, um, I'm trying to relax with things too. And what I'm doing is like, I'll give you an example. Um, I can watch some silly TV show. Is that relaxing? Possible. Yeah. I mean, I really don't watch TV. Mm -hmm. I, have no, yeah. I have no TV, but I use it for exercising mm -hmm. mostly. And if you're going to turn on my TV now, you you know what's on it? Cartoons because yeah. I watch cartoons sometimes. Uh, but I don't, I really don't watch TV. Um, and what I what really really helped me is this: I used to watch news all the time. Yeah. People like you have to be in, in you know you, you have to be informed. You have to know what's happening. Uh, I was on the news. I news everywhere. Yeah, I was on Fox and CNN and this, and I have the apps with the news. And I used to rage of what I saw on TV. Mm -hmm. It's just so negative. Mm -hmm. It's just it, it's like I think they're punishing you almost. Not saying anything positive, but just so negative. And mm -hmm. I heard a quote, uh, and uh, he, he's, a, he's a movie actor, this guy. Uh, uh, and he goes, I'd rather be not informed than misinformed. Oh. And mm -hmm. that really stuck with me. Mm -hmm. I stopped what, you know who said it? Denzel Washington. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 So, so he, he'd rather be just not informed. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, let me just try it. I stopped with all the news. No news. Yeah. I don't know what's happening in the world. Yeah. No, I, I really don't. I follow a few things mm -hmm. because I am in real estate space. I follow the treasury because that affects the rates. I do that. Then I follow few online resources or written resources when it comes to economy. Mm -hmm. Um, and of course, when uh with like building rates, movement, growth, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I see those political or anything like that i know politics affects it but as soon as i see those opinion pieces or you mm -hmm. know stuff about what's happening in uh the wars or conflicts or anything like that i immediately shut it off ignore mm -hmm. it turn the channel whatever you do so i i'm trying to keep away from all this negativity because okay. that really affects your body affects okay. your mind. and i'll give you one more I have friends that are all into this, into this crazy politics and into, mm -hmm. into this conflicts and, you know, Democrats, Republicans, all this stuff. You know what? I st I, I'm not going to say they're not my friends anymore because it's not true. They are. I just change the way I interact with them. Mm -hmm. And I'll give you an example. 
So before we get together for a barbecue and people just sit there and discuss politics and how, uh, like, I live by New York City and how New York City and the corruption and all this stuff. Now, I don't even go to those barbecues anymore. Why? Because I don't want to be bombarded by this negativity. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We both ride motorcycles, right? But when you ride motorcycles, you really don't talk much because you're riding motorcycles. So we still friends, we just do different activities. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. We ride motorcycles together. Yeah. We talk much. He doesn't have a chance to bombard me with this, you know, nonsense. Mm-hmm. And additionally, you can bring other people into the group that's gonna kind of deflect everything. Yeah. So that's yeah. how I adapted to this. Yeah. That all that negativity breeds stress in our bodies. And if we're trying to get really deep and focus on what we're doing, we have to like get rid of the noise. And a lot of the noise is the news. I don't watch that either because it stresses me out. Like I don't need that. I can stress myself out enough. I don't need all of that other stuff coming on top of me. So that really affects our body or it affects our focus. You know, like you said about that, you know, get interrupted. It takes 30 minutes to get back into focus. Just how many times does the dings and, you know, notifications go off? We could, we could possibly go the entire day, an entire week without being in focus. And really being able to focus, like you said, trying to meditate, which is really hard. I try, I try, I keep trying, but I, I know that it, it helps. It helps uh, reduce the stress that helps, you know, clear up the brain and kind of get you to focus on really what you want to do. So I'm thankful for that you to bring all of this in because it all goes together. It does. It, 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 it all interconnects as you see one thing, another thing is connected to it. A mm-hmm. uh, few things that I, uh, taken on lately is intermittent fasting. Mm-hmm. Um, and then of course I have like fast fasting days, mm-hmm. uh, for example, because it, like you, think or read or talk to people about one thing and they're like oh yeah well i was doing this and also i uh i saw this uh, crazy article that your mind and your gut is con- are connected yep right so like mind body connection so mm-hmm. if your gut is healthy then your mind is healthy yeah we're like Hmm, really? so we started digging more into this and i'm not trying to do or say anything that you have to do this and to right. make fast you just it's just one is connected with another mm-hmm. and it works for me. Yeah. And it, it, it's awesome. A lot of people are using intermittent fasting and use the previously, uh, just kind of, you know, offload your body of toxins and right. things like that. So, right. And it works. It, it really works. And I'll, I'll give you an example. It, um, so with the, the, when you fast and you don't eat for 18 hours and people are like, oh my gosh, how can you do this? It's impossible. <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. It's really possible. Is possible. I've done it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, eight hours while you're sleeping, you're not eating anyway. There you right. go. All you have to do is not eat for 10 hours. It's totally possible. Yep. So after 18 hours, this this uh, autophagy kicks in, right? Mm-hmm. This, uh, th- this Japanese doctor discovered it just recently in 2017, which is, which is really interesting. Yeah. I think it, it's just crazy. And he got a Nobel prize, I think for it too. Uh, so autophagy is basically, uh, do not, don't, I'm not a doctor, but basically what it does is it recycles old proteins and cells in your body. Right. And not only humans have it, everyone else has it too. Like, let's talk about dogs and cats right mm-hmm. when cats i have three when they get sick they stop eating right it right. doesn't mean that the, you, their body is telling them don't eat we are recycling mm-hmm. we're killing all bacteria and germs that's exactly how it works i know it's a weird topic uh but it really works mm-hmm. this thing really works yeah. so i actually tested it on myself and this is what happened so last year i i got a cold and my wife was like, well, this is perfect time to test your fasting. Yeah. So I, as soon as I felt that tickle in my throat, I stopped eating completely for, for 48 hours. I didn't eat. Mm-hmm. Guess what? I recovered in a day. I had no stuffy nose, none of that. Recovered in a day. And we're like, okay, it cannot be a coincidence. We got to try it again. What? So because I have two small children and they're complete germ magnets, <laughs> I got sick again. Yeah, you know, it, it, you know, because they go to kindergarten and you right. know what's happening over there. So I got sick again, stopped eating again, recovered again. I'm like, oh my gosh, this thing really works. Look mm-hmm. at this, it's unbelievable. What I'm like, why didn't anyone tell me about this? 
So like I said, one thing follows something else. Everything right. is interconnected. As you learn these things, it's it's just so interesting. Mm -hmm. It's just so interesting. Oh, right? yeah. Oh, if yeah. You know, like before, I was spraying Afrin, pepto all this, you know, you name it. I right. was spraying, you know, all these uh, vitamin Cs and stuff. Yeah. But technically, you don't have to. Just stop eating. Literally, try it. Stop all eating it. Can... Stop yeah, eating yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, just try it. And even if you cannot try it, if you cannot stop, this is, this is something else. This is really cool. Do not eat carbs or sugar during that time, during the sickness, mm -hmm. right? No bread, no sugar at all. Because your bacteria, the virus, mm -hmm. eats on sugar. Yeah. yeah. So what happened is if you're going to eat sugar or anything sweet or uh, carbs, you're going to grow it. Yeah, yeah. your body is going to fight it off eventually. It's right. going to take twice as long, but you're feeding it. So what if you're going to eat some, eat some vegetable or something like that. If you really, really want to eat something, just just don't eat sugar. Try it out. It's, yeah, try it out. Yeah, no, I'm all there because, you know, you, it's just like feeding something, right? Yeah. You, you know, you you feed it, you know, you give it energy, right? What does sugar do? Like we go for sugar to get energy, to boost our energy, right? So it it's going to grow something that makes it more energized. So what do you want to feed? You know, do you want to feed the sickness and let it, you know, you feel like crap longer? Or do you want to stop feeding it and actually, you know, feel better and get the clearer head or clearer gut? I mean, it goes the same. You can, you can cut out sugar, you know, people can do it. They can't. Yeah, I know hard. it's difficult. It's very difficult. Absolutely. But if you can't do it for forever, which is totally okay, uh, eat a piece of chocolate. That's fine. But for this period, while yeah. you're sick, just try not to. Could, listen, you don't want to anyway, because when you're sick, what's happening? Your nose is stuffed and you cannot taste anything anyway. Whatever, anything that you eat tastes like paper. It just, doesn't taste good. <laughs> yeah. And if you think about it, this is what your body is telling you. Right. And I discovered it. it. Uh, well, I didn't discover it, but I discovered it for myself. That's right. what I mean. To say. Yeah. Because when you're all stuffed up, you cannot taste anything, right? right? But when you eat food, you want to enjoy it. But if your body is not get, telling you like, hey, listen, you can't taste it. I'm not hungry. Why are you feeding me? Right, right. And you have dry throat. What is that telling you? Drink more water. Drink, so drink water. Stop eating. That's what your body is telling you. Come on. going to stop and listen. So we got to like close our brain off, shut our brain yeah. off, listen to our body. And so that we can actually perform better. Yeah. So awesome. And I mean, my mom's been telling me, uh, oh, you're so sick. Why didn't you eat a piece of candy to make you feel better? <laughs> that's that. That's what my mom used to give me. Piece of candy so I can feel better. Yeah, I felt better for that second. Yeah. But that sickness was longer, like two weeks, you know, two weeks or whatever it was. So if you think about it, that's what we've been taught. Right. But you know, it's very important to learn about new things. It so. is, it is. And that's why we continuous learn. So I'm so thankful to have this conversation with you today. Is there anything else you want to share with our listeners here before we conclude? Yeah, sure. Listen, it's, it's really important to open your mind to things. That's what I've noticed. Because like I said, uh, if you, if you asked me two years ago to do yoga or meditation or any of the stuff, I would just call you crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's just, uh, one thing that I've noticed is that have an open mind and try new things, have new experiences, because um, as as we grow, as, as we learn things, things that really, let's say, you're trying that don't work, what's the worst that can happen? Mm -hmm. That don't work. It's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. You just go back and resume your normal life, right? Nothing really got damaged. Nothing right. really changed. So it's definitely worth trying because if you don't try, you don't know if it's going to be better. So mm -hmm. it's really important to have an open mind. Um, and uh, if you have doubts, talk to people, really. Like I, I talk to people all the time and I really ask them this question. Mm -hmm. the, I mean, instead of asking this person a real estate question, I ask them about meditation because mm -hmm. that's what I want to know. I Listen, I have an idea and do how to buy apartment buildings right? That's what I do. I, I know how to do it. I don't need to ask him this. Mm -hmm. because if I want to ask him this, I can watch his YouTube videos because he tells you this stuff. <laughs> I want to know how did he get to this place? Mm -hmm. like, what's his daily routine? 
right? That that's yeah. my goal. Yeah. You know, in some cases you'd be like, oh yeah, how do you how do you uh let's say how do you uh invest my money? Yeah, Google it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really. Right. I mean, come on, uh, unless you you know you have like Warren Buffett in front of you, but even he just has everything public. Mm -hmm. You know, ask him something else. I I'm I'm always now curious to find out, like for example, what's your daily routine or like uh, I was watching this video recently, which is really, really interesting. Daily routine of Elon Musk. Mm, yeah. That guy does in one year what average person does in eight years. Mm -hmm. So my question is, I, I, I don't want to know how he, you know, engineers Tesla because, you know, it's fine. It drives or how he flies spaceships. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's fine. I want to know how his day is set up so I can be that effective. Mm -hmm. Like he's doing stuff and what is he focusing on instead of texting? Does he like texting or emails? I know he likes emails better. There you go. So I know I want to know how to be more productive. Mm -hmm. right? So I, I can I be better than him? Yes, absolutely. I don't want to be like Elon Musk. I want to be like me, yeah. but better than Musk. Right, right. And I, yes, I need some ideas, some structure in the day so I can grow faster. So if he cracked the code, I want to know the code. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's and apply it to you. <laughs> apply it to me. I know it's a bold statement, but I have goals, right? Like yeah. Ben said, if you don't have goals written, it's like I'm looking at my goals now. Yeah. And my goals is to have 25,000 units uh, by three years. Is it doable? Yes. Mm -hmm. But people who know real estate, like 25, uh, 25,000 doors in three years, that's just crazy goal. I mean, it's not crazy at all. Right. It's not. My first year goal was to have 200 good doors. I had 500. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So, yeah. I, I think Double that, my, it. oh, yeah. yeah. So, now I have 25,000. I'm looking at this board every single day. Yeah. Every single day. The little so. habits, little habits to accelerate, you know, success in your life all comes in different ways. We all have to figure it out for ourselves. But, we have lots of people out there that have done it before us. So we need to crack the code by asking them certain questions. Like, how do you stay so focused? Like, how do you get one year's stuff done? You know, your year one stuff done versus my eight. Like, how do you do that? Well, it's a lot of just, you know, getting out distractions, getting people to help, staying in your zone of genius, your 20%, your strengths, and doing, being aware of what your body needs so that you can stay healthy and you can stay strong and you can, your mind is right and you can do whatever. I know. Do everything. Do everything. We, yeah. We design for so much more. The potential is unlimited if you, if we get our minds right. So, yeah. Awesome. So where can people find out more about you? I know you're all over social media. So I am. You yeah. You can go on Facebook, in uh, LinkedIn, um, Instagramming. I have a website, zanticventures.com. Uh, and I do like the fun videos because I, I am all in real estate, but I also like motorcycles. So mm -hmm. in every video, I, I if I ride my motorcycle yeah. to the event or networking, I always put like my motorcycle in the shot or something like that. Nice. You know, I just make it kind of fun, you know, okay. it's enjoyable and entertaining. So yeah, look me up. If you have any questions, reach out anytime. It's 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 very, very exciting. And I'm I'm so happy to be here and share what I have learned. Well, thank you so much for being here, Vlad. It's been great. I'll put the links um, to how they can get a hold of you if you're at social media accounts in the show notes. So go ahead and reach out to Vlad for any of the questions, uh, whether it's real estate, growth, you know, meditation, you know, any of those things, reach out. So thank you so much for being here, Vlad, for being my guest today. Appreciate it and have a great, wonderful rest of the day. Thank you.